Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to continue working through the NPCs of Stardew Valley. Last week was everyone's least favorite blacksmith in the entire game. Turns out though that some people really do like Clint. And also some people think I'm writing up hit pieces for views. Honestly I wouldn't say any of these videos act as a glowing character review for the members of Pelican Town. Well, we all know there's at least one villager that no one hates, right? Let's talk about Gus today and see if he's hiding any dark secrets. Gus is the owner and sole resident of the Stardrop Saloon, right smack dab in the middle of Pelican Town. While Gus owns and operates the saloon, he also has some help from Emily. Gus himself spends nearly 12 hours a day behind the counter, but Emily actually works some pretty long hours herself. She's at the saloon working from about 4pm to midnight most nights. By the way, don't we know someone who closes up shop at around 4 o'clock each day? Anyway. That's not an 80 hour or so work week like Gus, but 55-ish is a pretty heavy schedule. So why does Gus need so much help? Is the saloon really that busy? The short answer to that question is no. <laughs> In fact, it's not really doing so great at all. Most nights you'll only see a few regulars at the bar. Pam, Clint, and Shane park it there pretty much every day. During rainy evenings or the winter days, the saloon picks up a little bit and unsurprisingly, people flock to the saloon on weekends. The schedule in the valley for everybody doesn't really rotate around weekends as much as some of our lives do, but everyone still piles in to spend some time chatting, dancing, playing pool, or just getting sloshed. By the end of the evening, all of Gus's patrons have walked or sometimes stumbled out into the dark, and he actually retires to his room before Emily leaves. She locks up on her way out, and they repeat the cycle again the next day. Sometimes the saloon is busy, sometimes it's slow, but always, always Gus is standing there eager to offer his neighbors a drink or a shoulder to lean on. At Three Hearts though, you can find out the truth of the saloon. Money is tight, and it's at least partially because Gus can't separate his friendships from his business. He tells you that Pam hasn't been paying on her tab, and that he's having a hard time bringing it up because they're close friends. It's up to the farmer to save the day by implying that the saloon might have to close up if Pam won't pay. It's not exactly breaking her kneecaps or anything, but it definitely gets the job done. For now. Pam pays up, and Gus immediately rewards her by offering her the ability to dig herself right back into debt. A perfect happy ending. So on the surface, it seems like Gus is a pretty nice person, and maybe a bit of a pushover. It's obvious that Gus and Pam are close, at the very least. I've seen theories that Gus is Penny's dad because, I mean, we can't be sure of anyone's parents in this game, but I don't really think that's the case. I think he's just a friendly guy, although his friendship isn't particularly outspoken. I definitely think he could be a little bit more outspoken about a few things though. Gus has bills to pay, but there are some things that he sees and turns a blind eye to that make me a little bit uncomfortable. Gus tells you that Pam and Clint come into the saloon almost every night. He acknowledges that he would probably go out of business if they stopped coming, and he tells the farmer not to scare them off. I think most people would agree that Pam displays some signs of alcoholism, but we don't necessarily see those broadcasts as much with Clint. Maybe he's here drinking every night, but there's another line from Gus that implies something else, and we might already have our suspicions. With six or more hearts, Gus will tell you that Clint comes into the saloon almost every night and sits at the same table by himself. Sometimes he glances over at Emily with a nervous look. Maybe that's why he comes in so often. Then Gus laughs and says it means more business for him. Kind of makes you wonder though, doesn't it? Does the Stardrop Saloon, which is apparently struggling to make ends meet and needs to keep its regulars coming back, really need a second person working every night? Couldn't Gus get by on weekdays by himself? He could probably call Emily in if it rains or give her more hours during the winter. But Gus just told us that Clint keeps the bar open, at least partially. Do you really think Clint would be there every night if Emily wasn't? I have some doubts. The other dialogue that worries me is kind of a two-part issue, actually. If you upgrade Pam's trailer to a house and let people know that you did it, you can see this dialogue from Gus. Hey, I heard what you did for Pam. That was really nice of you. Sadly, I don't think it will get her to cut back on the beverages. The little quotes are cute, Gus. We know what the beverages are, you're the one pouring them for her. <laughs> At eight or more hearts, Gus might say, Pam comes into the saloon almost every night and drinks way too much beer. Ah well, I shouldn't pass judgment on my customers. These two pieces together kind of tell us something. 
Gus knows that Pam has a problem. I mean, most of us probably know that too, and we don't give her the booze. He doesn't think that a change in scenery will help her kick that habit, and he's right. She doesn't magically get sober when she gets the house, and we've already talked about that, so we won't rehash it. But he told us earlier that he wouldn't be able to stay open if it weren't for Pam and Clint. I've seen some people wondering why Gus doesn't help Pam with her sobriety, or even just cut her off when she's blitzed at the bar. And I think it's just because he can't afford to, even if he did want that for her. So, we have a little bit of a conundrum here, don't we? Presumably Gus is paying Emily for her work, right? I would guess he's making more from Clint being there than he pays Emily, otherwise he would probably cut her hours. I'm sure she does amazing work, but the level of business just doesn't really justify it most nights. And he needs Pam to keep buying more booze because she also keeps a roof over his head. I mean, I don't want to disparage bar owners for providing alcohol to people. There's obviously a demand for it, both in the game and in real life. But Gus really needs some of the villagers to be sad and thirsty in order to pay his bills. At Five Hearts, you can get a scene with Gus that I think is just fantastically interesting. He shows up at your house in the morning and goes on a whole ominous cooking-related spiel. I see everything in town. When you add a new ingredient to a dish, it might just ruin it. But it could also make something wonderful. Okay, cool, whatever. But I really like the implication here. Gus says, I have to stir this pot every five minutes. You probably already know this, but stirring the pot is an idiom for making unnecessary trouble or agitating things to cause unrest and dissent. Our beloved Gus is here on the front step of our very own house, telling us that he keeps things interesting in this town, this very town where he sees everyone's troubles. He literally makes his living by keeping Pam in her cups and keeping Clint at his table all alone. And I just think that's an absolute masterpiece of manipulation. Make no mistake, I'm not trying to say that it's Gus's responsibility to act as a therapist to any of the residents of Pelican Town, despite the way that some bar patrons tend to treat their favorite bartenders. I do think it's more troublesome in this small town, however, because you know, he tells you he knows everything that's going on, like he knows exactly the struggles that his neighbors are going through. So is Gus an evil mastermind? I mean, no, probably not, after all. We see him telling Linus to come in for food instead of eating out of the trash. We're pretty confident that Linus isn't going to be paying the bill regardless, so there's nothing that Gus really gets out of this. I'm pretty sure he's just a kind person who has a hard time saying no to anyone, even if he knows that what they're doing is self-destructive. Right? Right? What do you think about Gus? Is he a little... sus? Or am I just overthinking things? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next video.